In this video we are going to be looking at linear relationships between two variables um, given some data and we're going to look at example one with regards to this information here. Using the table of values below create a graph and determine an equation which best represents the relationship between the two variables. Now the two variables I've attached to this information which has been provided and I've suggested that this is going to be our x-axis and this is going to be our y-axis. And obviously these are our x and y variables. Now you can think of them, I've gone and put this little note down here. You can think of each of these things as x, y coordinates. So right here we have one coordinate, another coordinate, another, 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 another. So what we can do with the, the data this uh, data or these values here is um, put it into a uh, x, y axis such that we can graph this information to get a better idea as to the relationship between these two variables. So what I've done is exactly that where I've created a y and an x axis. I've made my maximum value for the y bigger than this which is 11 so I've gone at least to 12 and my minimum neg uh, bigger than negative one, so this would be negative two. And also my x minimum and maximum, so my smallest x value is zero, so that's really as far as I needed to go, and my biggest is six. What I then did was, as I said, treating these like coordinates, I just went put those coordinates on that axis by putting a cross where I found them. What I then did was I recognised that this is a linear relationship and you can see it's a straight line, therefore it's linear. Okay, and with linear relationships, <coughs> excuse me, with linear relationships, the general form for a linear relationship is this here, y equals mx plus c, which basically means that for some value y that we put in, it will give us a return value for x, which will be different to that of y. Okay, so we need to find these two values in order to create an expression which explains or describes this relationship. Now to do that, the only two things we need to find is M and C. The reason being is because Y is our Y coordinate and X is our X coordinate. Okay, so these could be a, multi uh, a multitude of different things. What I uh, then defined was my formula for calculating M being the gradient. If I need to find these, I'm going to start with the first one, M, because I'll just simply work left to right, so I'll find M before I find C. So M, this is my expression in which I used to solve for M, the gradient or the slope. Now, all I need to simply do is choose two coordinates, okay? If this is coordinate one and this is coordinate two, then this is my X coordinate for coordinate one, or X one, and this is my Y coordinate or coordinate 1 or y1. Likewise, coordinate 2, x2, y2. Okay, so first coordinate, second coordinate. x1, y1, x2, y2. I've then substituted these values which I've drawn arrows to into this formula such that I get this and then I simplify that expression to 2. Once I've got m equal to 2, I can then put it back into this general form for a straight line. So I'll then get y equals 2x plus c. Now I've noted this 2 was m, and I put a tick because I've done that, I've found that one. But like I said, I need to find two things. I've found this one, I need to find c still, so I've just suggested. Still need to find this, it's the y-intercept. So I did that over the page. Now, I've noted here that, that before I even calculate the y-intercept, I just want to make a note that there are two ways to find c, uh, the c value of the y-intercept. Now, you can do it visually from the graph by actually looking at where it cuts the, uh, the y-axis, sorry, which is right here, or you can algebraically calculate it. Now, I prefer the algebraic method because it's more accurate. The reason being is the visual representation is realistically only as good as 
the graphing that you drew. Now, if your graph isn't accurate, it might not appear, it might not actually be, or the white intercept might not be where it actually appears to be. So I like to do it algebraically to be sure. So I said visually we can see the y-intercept appears at negative 1. So what I mean by that is if I scroll back over the page, you can see it appears at negative 1 here. But that, as I said, that really all depends on the accuracy of the graph and the points drawn. So to algebraically solve for C, all we need is one coordinate from the graph or table of values, and this is the coordinate which I chose. Okay. So substituting this coordinate into the equation, we can then rearrange to solve for C. Now if this seems confusing, that's okay, because it might become a bit more clearer with regards to this here. This is the equation which I found on the previous page, once I had my m value. I'm looking for C, but to find C, I obviously need to know x and y. Okay, I can't solve this unless I have all the variables known, apart from the one in which I'm looking for being C. So if I have an x and y value, then I can substitute in for y and x or x and y and solve for this c. And that's what I suggest that we do up here with regards to grabbing one of the coordinates from the table of values. And the one in which I choose, chose was simply this 5 and 9. It could have been any of them. It would work with any, but I just chose this one because it looked random. Um, so that's why I chose that one. Um, and then we can substitute that x and that y into x and y, and then solve for c, which is what I've done here. Now when I do that substitution into x, note I put a bracket. Now this does mean 2 times x, but so does this. The bracket insinuates a multiplier. The reason why I do that is because sometimes it can uh, screw up the order of operation if you just put a multiplier and you see it as 2 times 5 plus something, as opposed to 2 times 5 plus something. Okay, sometimes you get it right, sometimes you won't, but this way is a surefire way of getting it right all the time. So this tells me I have to do this first before adding the result of this to C. So first thing, like I said, do this. 2 times 5 is 10, plus the C, I don't know. But what I can do then is rearrange for C such that I move this 10 over the other side of the equation, and if this is a plus 10 on the left, I'd have to take 10 on the right, I'm uh, oh, sorry, I'll say that again. If this is a plus 10 on the right, then I'd have to take 10 on the right to get rid of it, and I'll be left with C. But if I take 10 from this side, then I need to take 10 from this side. Therefore, 9 take 10 will give me C. No, it's not 10 take 9, it's 9 take 10. And that's something that will uh, is commonly confused, but you need to be really careful with regards to what you're doing um, in this step here. We're taking 10 from 9, not 9 from 10. 9 take 10 is negative 1, therefore C is equal to negative 1. Finally, substituting that value of C, we just found negative 1 right here, into the equation uh, will give us the uh, function explaining or describing the relationship between those variables, x and y. So as a final step, I'm simply going to use this equation, and now I'm going to plug in the value negative 1 for C, which I just found which is this. Now, it might be a little bit confusing to some people as to why there's no plus evident in here. The reason being is, well, you could actually write in a plus such that it read 2x plus minus 1. But at the end of the day, when we have a plus minus next to each other or a minus plus next to each other, we just get rid of the plus and it's insinuated that it's going to be a minus, so it should be 2x take 1.